Hey Booktube, Chelsea's Reads here. I am recording this on a different device, so we will see how it goes. Also moved to a different part of the room to try to get a little bit of different lighting, and we'll see how it goes. I usually record this when no one's home, so people walking by don't hear me, so we'll see how it goes because everyone came home early today. <laughs> so I hope everyone's doing well in their second week here of the isolation period of um, things being shut down and being stuck at home and all that fun stuff. Um, so we're going to start off like we did last time, and I'm going to show you the books I bought this week or that came in this week, um, and then move into the segment where I tell you what I read this week. And the piles are just about equal. <laughs> Alright, let's get started with uh, this week's book haul. The first book that I got this week was The Rise of Skywalker which is the final book in the Star Wars series. It is the expanded edition. I also got the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. Um, it's actually a lot shorter than I anticipated. It is by Ray Carson. She wrote a couple books, I think, in the um, Star Wars New Canon novels, so I trust her for it. For it to say it's expanded and it being this short is not boding well for me. I'm pretty sure The Last Jedi's novelization was longer. Um, I haven't read any of the novelizations yet. I mean, I read episode one, excuse me, I read episode one, and I'm a little bit behind um, then, but I'll get to this one eventually. Uh, I am actually one of the few people that really like the sequel trilogy. I didn't mind The Rise of Skywalker, and actually that was a decent movie, so I'm interested to see what the expanded edition is going to be. Lonus. So that was the first book that um, I had pre-ordered and it came in this week. The next book that I got this week was Pride and Platypus, Mr. Darcy's Dark Secret, Dreadful Secret, um, which is actually a lot thicker than I thought, as you can see. Um, and that is by Vera Nazarian. Nazarian? I'll just show her name there it's so long. Um, and basically from my understanding this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling um, where Darcy transforms into a platypus. I don't know. <laughs> I like Pride and Prejudice is probably my favorite book. I read it um, at least once every year or every other year I try to. Uh, what I really enjoy is like these blurbs on the back here are all like from one of them's from Fitzwilliam Darcy and other ones from um, a lady of elegance, and it's just, uh, it just seems like it's gonna be a really fun retelling, um, the title won me over, there's a wolf on the cover, there's a bunch of planet pie all over, um, so I'm looking forward to rereading, or to reading, to reading this one for the first time. Next book that I ordered this week was one that's been on my Amazon wishlist for a while, I finally just bit the bullet and got it. Um, and that's the Tattoo Story. Um, it is by Alessandro Paol Paolini. A uh, very Italian name. The cover is actually like fan art drawing of the girls instead of an actual photo, so I think that's hilarious. So Tattoo is actually a Russian duo band, and they were really popular in the early 2000s. The controversy being that they were lesbians, but then the, it came out that they weren't really lesbians. They were just doing it for uh, media attention. So this book is actually really short. Um, but it covers the entire span, I guess, of the band. It says the reconstruction of the rise and fall of the most controversial pop duo of the 2000s. Um, I really liked this band, and I think... I followed most of their drama and stuff, um, especially after they broke up um, and whatnot, so I'm actually interested to see um, the toll, the full story and to read like more in depth, I guess, about the controversy, about how they got started, and um, yeah, I'm really tongue-tied today, guys, I really apologize. These next two books were pre-orders as well, they released this last Tuesday. Um, and they were highly anticipated pre-orders for me, the first one being The Faceless Old Woman Who Secretly Lives in Your Home uh, by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. 
This is a character from the popular Welcome to Night Vale podcast, um, and she's the character is voiced by Mara Wilson, who's Matilda, um, and she's one of my favorites. So this is her origin story. I did get the signed copy, of course. Um, and if you pre-ordered it, you're supposed to get all this really fun stuff, um, like stickers and um, a print of artwork. And I'm hoping I submitted it to their website that I pre-ordered it, so I'm hoping to get that because I really am a big fan. The cover itself is gorgeous. I like the, the shade of blue even. All the fun little nuggets that are on the cover are intriguing and interesting. Um, basically, the secret woman who lives in your home is a ghost who is not a villain, not really a hero. She's just kind of there. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see her backstory and to get her uh, history in here. I've not read the other Welcome to Night Vale novels yet. Maybe I'll get to them during this isolation period. We'll see. <laughs> and finally, the last book that I ordered, it was another pre-order that I ordered from Barnes & Noble. It was The Sinner um, by J.R. Ward. This is maybe the 20th-ish. I don't remember. It's a novel of the Black Dagger Brotherhood. It's her most recent one covering the love story of Sin and Joe Early. Um, this book is about vampires, it's about demons, it's about love. <laughs> it's a super complicated series, um, but I highly recommend it. They're some of my favorite books. Um, I usually go to her Cincinnati event every year where she announces the next one coming out. We all talk about the book and it's great, but with all this um, stuff being shut down, she actually did it live on Facebook, um, and she had a lot of really good things to say about this one. It's fairly thick. Um, I usually wait till these come out in paperback to buy them, uh, because I prefer paperback, but I don't want to wait that long to read them, so I usually rent them from the library. Um, but I was looking forward to Sin's book so much that I did buy it in hardcover. Um, so I will probably be reading this, I'm going to start this book tomorrow. Uh, I'm in the middle of the book right now, so I want to finish that one, and then I'll start this one, because this one takes priority because of the fandom and the fan groups that I'm in that we talk about it, and I just don't want to be left behind. <laughs> so, I was actually pretty busy this week with reading. Um, as many as books as I just bought, I actually read probably as many. <laughs> um, so we're going to get into that now, is the books that I have read this week, and we're going to start with Melody by... Um, V.C. Andrews. Melody is the first book in the Logan series by V.C. Andrews. Um, and maybe we should talk about V.C. Andrews for a minute. Because uh, people, a lot less people than I thought knew, know about V.C. Andrews. Um, V.C. Andrews actually only wrote um, a very small number of her books. I think she's only wrote maybe less than ten of the books um, before she passed away. And the family hired a ghost writer. His name was Andrew Niederman, and he took over. And allegedly, V.C. Andrews had started started a bunch of the books and outlined a bunch more, and he just kind of like filled in the holes and um, like wrote the rest of them or like flushed them out or whatever. Um, it's just a little odd to me that they keep using her name. Um, yeah, this one as well, if you look at the end of her name, it has an all rights reserved, you can't see it because it's terrible lighting, an all rights reserved mark next to it, so it's like a copyrighted name, um, but Melody's the first book, and much like all of V.C. Andrews' other books, um, it follows the same basic formula, uh, Melody lives in a coal mining town in Virginia, everything's going swell for her, she's actually pretty bright, she's got one friend, she's got a loving family, um, then her dad meets a tragic accident early on, um, her mom was flirting with the town miscreant, um, and drops her off in Cape Cod with the rest of her family, um, so because her mom wants to go pursue being an actress and stuff, um, all right, the phone's turned off now, so the mom leaves Melody with her family in Cape Cod, so because she wants to go be an actress, so Melody gets to meet her aunt and uncle, who actually are experiencing the loss of their own daughter, who is Melody's age, 
So her aunt's trying to like recreate Laura in Melody. Um, and there's this cousin who was Laura's twin brother and he and Laura allegedly were closer than they should be or that's what the people at school keep telling Melody and they insinuate. Um, the popular boy at school tries to rape Melody and Melody has this really disapproving grandmother and then she finds out that her mother and father they weren't related per se. Her mother was adopted by her father's parents. So they were like adopted brother and sister and they end up like falling in love and stuff. But incest is nothing new with E.C. Andrews. So um, then she also finds out spoiler. If you don't want to be spoiled for V.C. Andrews, then just skip to the next one. But she finds out her father's not actually her father. She suspects some recluse artist on the road might actually be her father. Um, so her mother ends up dying in a car accident. And her grandmother gains some kind of respect for her because Melody tried to go back to Virginia and realizes there's nothing left for her there. And she's stuck with the Logans. Um, and that was book one. Um, there's two more that follow Melody. Book four go is a prequel that shows what happened to Laura, who died um, in a sailboat accident, according to this book. Um, and then the fifth book is about the grandmother. Um, I think I gave this one four stars, because I actually, I actually liked this one better than some of the other ones that I read. I took a long break from V.C. Andrews, because her books were so repetitive and annoying. Um, but this one was really refreshing, and I think it was better written than some of her other ones. So I think I gave this four stars, maybe three and a half on Goodreads. Um, but it was it was one of the better titles, I think, from V.C. Andrews. The next book that I read this week was Less Than a Gentleman by Carolyn Sparks. Um, like I said in my previous video, um, Carolyn Sparks is one of my favorite authors. This is actually one of her historical books and one of the first books she wrote, but it was written way after she wrote it. Um, this is the sequel to Forbidden Lady, but it can also be read as a, kind of a standalone. So this book takes place during the American, like, revolutionary period. No, during the Civil War. <laughs> I'm really bad at history, guys. But this takes place during the American Civil War. And it follows the sister of the of Virginia. Virginia was the um, heroine in the first book, The Forbidden Lady. But this one follows Carolyn, and they are on the run from some redcoats. The redcoats burn down their home, um, and she impersonates when they find this plantation. And then when she goes there, um, the woman's like, "Oh, you must be Agatha." So Carolyn's like, "Yes, I am." Um, and this woman that owns a plantation had invited this girl, Agatha, over to marry her son, uh, Matthias. And um, Matthias, when he comes in, realizes it's not Agatha, so he pretends to be the butler. And um, it's just this, this case of, well, I can't tell her who I really am because I don't want her want to want me for my money. Um, and of course, it's a love story. Um, despite Carolyn Sparks being my favorite author, this is by far, I think, the best book she's written. I don't typically read historical romances. I went through that phase when I was younger, and I'm kind of over it now. But this was my first five-star read of 2020. And I don't really give too many five-star reads or five stars out to books, but this was definitely five stars. It was just so good. It was just really well-written. The characters were intriguing. I loved watching Carolyn and Matthias fall in love. Um, the espionage part of it because Carolyn and her sister want to be spies um there's the what happened to Virginia's husband because he's missing in this one uh there's all these different relations going on and it's set to the backdrop of the civil war so it's a little bit of a different setting um but it was really good I read it really I think I read it in a day um, it's not super long. Mine's actually a library copy, um, or a previous library copy, so it's a little bit squatter than normal. Um, but it was by far my favorite Carolyn Sparks book, and I've read all of her stuff. 
Um, and it was surprisingly good. Like, I liked The Forbidden Lady, the book that came before this one, but this one, like I said, is just really surprising, and I was really taken with it. <laughs> Highly recommend. The next two books I read this week were actually the second and the third book in the Return to Fear Street series, the second book being The Wrong Girl. Uh, both of these are by Arnold Stein. So, The Wrong Girl was awful. It was by far the worst book that I read this week. Like, by far. Um, it's basically about a group of friends who decide that they're going to pull a bunch of pranks and they're going to film them and put them on YouTube. But their pranks are really stupid. Like, one of their pranks was, like, they let a bunch of dogs loose in a pet store. Uh, then their next prank was they were going to fake a car accident and it, like, blocked the intersection so no one can go see the school play. Um, and then they're like, we're going to fake a robbery in a store. But they told the cashier, like, hey, this is what we're going to do, play along. And because the boyfriend's girlfriend was jealous, they made it look like Poppy killed the cashier, but then he wasn't really dead. And the police were like, yeah, we knew that, like, they faked it out. I, we were in on it. So then Poppy gets mad, and then her friends start getting attacked and dying. Um, and it was really stupid. Like, the one, they release a bunch of hornets into the guy's room. They put acid in the girl shampoo bottle. Um, but Arnold Stein tries to do these twist endings, and sometimes they're really good. It wasn't really good in this one. It was super obvious who did it. It was really crappily written. And it was just unbelievable. He kept switching narration for some reason in this one. And it just, I didn't like it at all. It was terrible. Um, book three was a little bit better. It's actually out of the, like, this is a three book series. So out of the three books in the series, this one was the best. This one's Drop Dead Gorgeous. Um, the cover art for this is phenomenal. Like, check that out. I know the lighting's terrible, so as best as you can. And the art, it looks like, is by Justin Erickson. So Justin Erickson did the artwork for these, um, and they're probably the best things about these series. So this one um, was still only like three stars, um, because they're a lot thicker than the original Fear Street books, and I just don't think Arl Stein can write books that are this long. I don't think he knows how to fill the pages, fill the time. Um, if the story was condensed and like tighter, I think it would have been better. But again, the twist ending in this was like, I knew it from like the first chapter who was like what the twist was going to be. Uh, basically, it's about a new girl, Morgan Marks, comes to town, and she's a vampire, and the kids start dying. That's the plot. It doesn't even take its place in Shady Side, so when she's like, I'm actually Morgan Fear, it meant nothing, because the legend of the fears didn't apply to these kids, because they're not in that town. I, didn't, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this book. It was really bad. <laughs> we'll go on to the next. Next after that, I read House of Thirteen. It's the first book in the Delaney series by Andy Lockwood. Again, pretty cool cover, um, but cool covers only take you so far. I was a little bit disappointed in this book because um, I like Andy Lockwood. I liked his first book, Empty Hollies, and this book was just not good. Like, it's pretty thick, and um, I think it's like 300 pages, 350 pages, but 380 pages. 380 pages, and by page 250, like, nothing happened. Like, the very beginning of the book, the main character, Ren, gets hit by a bus and dies. These two women find her in the morgue, bring her back, and then they tell her, like, she's not really dead. She's being reborn right now. I don't know. Um, and that was it for 250 pages, was just her being alive again and getting to know these characters. Um, and then I skipped ahead to page 300 because I was bored, and there was some kind of monster. I don't know where it came from, and I didn't really care to figure it out. So it's book one. There's supposed to be more in the series, but I don't know if I'm going to pick it up if he ever chooses to write book two. He's written, like, three different things since this book. Um... The characters weren't really well written, probably because Andy Locke was a man and all his characters were female, and he just didn't write female characters very well. 
like red is supposed to be super goth and I don't really know why and they didn't really do much it was just a really boring and really disappointing read the last book that I read this this week was a lot better it was um volume three of Cal the calendar girl series by Audrey Carlin Audrey yeah Audrey Carlin and this is a collection of the novellas there's 12 in all so this collection had July August and September so the main plot of this series is Mia, um, I don't know if she, Mia Saunders, <laughs> um, Mia Saunders is an escort, and she's an escort because her father owes a ton of money to her ex-boyfriend, and is currently in a hospital because her ex-boyfriend beat the crap out of him because he couldn't pay back his debt, so every month she goes off to a different suitor, um, she doesn't have to sleep with him, but if she sleeps with them, she gets an extra $25,000. She only slept with three of the guys. It's really important because she talks about it in this book with her boyfriend. So by July, um, she has already been attacked and almost raped. So she's getting over her trauma in July. And the singer that she hired her to be in her video, this video, I don't know why he hires an escort to star in a video. Why can't he just hire a dancer? Um, but he helped her kind of get over this trauma by making her talk to her boyfriend and her best friend. It's not perfect, this is clearly trash, it's called Calendar Girl, and it's about an escort that goes with different men every month, what are you guys expecting? <laughs> um, in August, she actually finds out about a secret brother, and then in September things get ridiculous because her ex-boyfriend comes back into the picture because she missed two months of payment, and he was like, I'm gonna give you an option, you either pay me this $400,000 right now, or you sleep with me. And she almost sleeps with him because she's making out with him. And she just was picturing her boyfriend because, you know, it's been like two months since she hooked up with her boyfriend. And she was really horny, so she could just fantasize about it being her real, her actual boyfriend and not her ex who's evil and, you know, had her best friend locked up at the time. So it was like an honest mistake. Come on. Yeah, because her boyfriend makes movies, and he decided to get the perfect shot, so he goes to this dangerous location in Sri Lanka, and he gets abducted by Asian terrorists. I don't know why, I gave this book three stars, I think, though, um, cause, because it was silly, and it was fun. Uh, Mia kind of straight up sucks, and her best friend sucks even more. Um, They didn't deal with the trauma very well. I don't actually know why I liked this book so much now that I'm talking about it, but... Uh, I really liked her and her boyfriend, Wes. They're adorable. They finally admitted that they were in love. This is why you don't record while people are home. <laughs> there was some kind of delivery and a bunch of garbage going on back there. But yes, the Calendar Girl um, series is quite ridiculous. But Wes and Mia decide to finally um, admit that they're in love and they're going to be exclusive. Um, but she still is going to continue to be an escort, even though her debt was completely paid off by her randomly newfound brother. It's a ridiculous series. It's fun. It's lighthearted. It never really takes itself too seriously. It tried to a little bit in this one, but then it quickly was like, yeah, never mind. We're on the that we're trash. Um, so that was it for me this week. I hope this video is finding you guys safe and healthy. And we're going to keep going with this train. We're going to go um, next week. Like I said, next week for sure I'm going to be reading The Center. Um, I'm probably going to start that one tomorrow. I'm halfway through a book right now, and it's awful. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. And I guess it'll depend on how long it takes me to read The Center. As far as book hauls go, I shouldn't have too much more. Um, because... I think I have really all, everything that I need at this point. But we'll see. Um, yeah, make sure you leave a comment down below and tell me what you're reading and how you guys are surviving this self-isolation period. Um, like I said, we're all in it together, guys. See you next week.